Okay, the first thing that you have to do in iBooks Author is choose a template for your project. Don't worry about if what you choose is exactly what you want right now. Um, you can always make adjustments to your template later. Uh, the thing I really like about iBooks Author is that there are so many good looking templates that I can start with. Um, I don't have to worry about doing design work as well as authoring. And so for this project I just chose the contemporary template to start with. The template also includes uh, some things that it's dummied in for me. You can see the, the text here on the chapter page and the title. Um, also, there are three pages that have been suggested for me over on the left side of the screen. That was the chapter page section and then a body page. The first thing I do actually is I just delete all of these pages. Uh, I do that because I find it easier to drag my content in from pages rather than try to insert it into those existing layouts. Now all I have left is my book cover, and I'll go ahead and edit that now. And it's just as, as simple as selecting the text and uh, either deleting it or changing it. Um, I'm just going to have actually my book title, and I'm also going to add my author's name. I want to keep this very simple because this is what shows on the bookshelf, so I'm actually going to just delete that uh, top section. And this is a good time to make the point that you control the elements of your iBook. Um, just because they've suggested uh, placement of certain elements in the template, you, you have control over that. You can delete or add, um, just like the suggested pages I deleted earlier. Okay, so I've got my image in. Now I'm going to add some content. To do that, I'll just grab my file. Uh, that has my text in it directly from the finder and drop it into iBooks Author. This has already been formatted with heading tags and it pretty much looks the way that I want it, so I'll just drop it in. And as you can see that the chapter really just got built for me. Now all I need to do is change a few default images, um, default text, and drag in some additional elements and I'll be done. So this is the chapter page, the first page that the reader sees um, of this chapter. So I'm just going to make a few changes here. This chapter is called Part 1. So I'm actually going to also get rid of um, above where it says chapter one. I think I'm going to just delete that as well because I don't want it to be confusing for the reader. Also I don't think it really needs that extra text. And I'll pull in an image that I've already prepared um, just like I did for the book cover. Okay, I'm happy with that, so now I need to go and place a few elements into the rest of the chapter, which I'll do now. So as you can see here, an image that was embedded in the text came along when I placed the chapter in my project, but it looks a little off, so I'll just grab it and move it around until I like it. This is one of the really great things about working in iBooks Author is that you, you can really just grab things and move them around. And this is the kind of work that you should be doing when you're working in iBooks Author. Um, you're just refining things. You're not actually doing much authoring because you already did most of that work in pages. Now what I've just added here uh, is a new element that I created um, actually in Google SketchUp. It's a 3D element and it it uh, is a triangle that the reader can manipulate to see how the shape changes with the viewing angle and it kind of helps to illustrate the point the author is making in the image that was already included. And as you can see the uh, element inspector pops up. This is context sensitive so that means that the changes I make in the inspector always apply to the object I've selected. So here I am making changes to the title and caption and accessibility description of the 3D element uh, because that's what's selected. And as you can see I actually just deleted the title 
that's again another one of those things that's suggested for you um, but you don't have to do that I would say that you want to keep it consistent throughout your book so um, in this book I've decided that caption is enough and I'm not going to um, have a title associated with my elements what I'm doing now is I'm just adding my accessibility description and I'm um, adding a caption that gives the reader some direction about how they should interact with this object. Okay. I can actually move this element around Um, I can also resize it if I want to. I can just play with it until I like it. So I'm just going to, I think, put it down here on the bottom. Okay, I like that. Okay, uh, that looks pretty good to me. So now I'll add another image that was not included in the text uh, that I pulled over from pages. This is an alternate method for adding images. So I know generally where I want to place the image. I'm just going to go grab it from my finder and drag and drop it right into my page. It doesn't really matter where you drop the image uh, because you can always grab it later and move it. Again, you can also resize it. Uh, you can um, add alt text. You can add title or caption or really anything that you want to it at this point. And that goes for every element that you add to your book. Okay, just one more example of the process for you. I have um, actually, I've, I've downloaded a Creative Commons audio file that I want to add to my book. And I want to place it on this page. And again, I'm just going to drag and drop this into my project from my finder. And as you can see here, iBooks author is optimizing the file for me to a format that performs best in an iBook. So I don't have to worry about file type uh, when it comes to audio, video, and other elements. It just does that for me, which is really nice. And, and there you can see the familiar element inspector. Again, I can make changes to the uh, title, caption, accessibility description of this item as well. So basically, that's all there is to it. Uh, to finish up my iBook, I would just keep adding elements until I'm happy with it. And so for now, I'm happy with this project. I think I will actually preview it. To do that, I just need to make sure that my iPad is attached to my computer. Then I just click the Preview button. And in the next part of this video, I'll show you an earlier proof of this project that's already been placed on my bookshelf. Now I can go to the iBooks bookshelf to open up a proof of my iBook. And this will open up my iBook to chapter one, which in this book is called part one. From here I can scroll through and easily see all of the pages in part one. And I can see my section headers as well. And I can touch any page to open it in full screen view. And now I can flip through the pages to navigate my way through the book. And here's the 3D object I created earlier to illustrate figure one from the original text, which you can see on the left of the screen. Uh, I've left intact in the text as well. And I can interact with this widget by rotating it in place, or I can make it larger by pinching it open. And I can pinch again to return it to its original position. Then I can continue flipping through the book by swiping right to left, or I can pinch down any page to return to my chapter view, and I can navigate from here too. And here's the page where I added the audio widget. I can touch that to hear it start playing, although I won't do it here because you won't be able to hear it in this video. Now I can also do some things in iBooks that you've probably seen if you're familiar with books published in EPUB format. 
If I tap in the center of the screen, I can access the toolbar. Then I can use that to go back to the table of contents. And I can also bookmark a page. I can uh, also search for a term. I can highlight and make a note. I can view all of my notes here uh, and I also have the option to view them as study cards. If there were a glossary of terms in my book, I could also view those as study cards. And I just click Done to go back to the page I was on. Now to close the book, I just touch in the center of the screen again to bring up the toolbar, and then touch Library to return to the bookshelf. I hope I've been able to help you learn about creating iBooks using Pages and iBooks Author. Thanks for watching.